the only hope you have in a so-called country going down are, are rebels. And what I mean by that is people who care about other people. They're willing to go out and speak the truth to power, those things. I am a husband, a father, a lawyer, a Christian, and a proud Canadian. I started this series because it was clear that our nation needs truth. Not just another biased narrative, but real information of substance. We need access to facts and the freedom to think for ourselves. I'm Leighton Gray, and this is Gray Matter. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Gray Matter. You know, it was uh, American uh, uh, satirist Mark Twain who once wrote that uh, a man goes bank- bankrupt slowly and then all at once. And those of us who have lived through the last three years watching the erosion and destruction of our constitutional freedoms and human rights uh, perhaps have the same sense of what Mr. Twain was writing about back then. Uh, our guest today is a man named John W. Whitehead, who has actually been focused in this space for now over 40 years. Uh, he's a constitutional lawyer and author and activist, um, and uh, he's written a couple of really incredible books that are going to be part of our reading list today, and so we're honored to have John with us to talk about his work, to talk about something called the Rutherford Institute that he's founded, and to, to really help us to understand how this expanding administrative state um, that has sort of corrupted all of our trusted ins- institutions is really destroying uh, Western society and Western civilization, everything that we, we hope to retain uh, as, uh, as societies in the West, both in the United States and Canada and elsewhere. Welcome to Gray Matter, John. It's really great to have you on the program. Thank you for having me on, sir. Yeah. I'm grateful for your books. Uh, just by way of background, people, uh, John is an attorney and author who has written and debated and practiced widely in the area of constitutional law and human rights. Uh, Mr. Whitehead's concern for the persecuted and oppressed led him in 1982 to establish the Rutherford Institute, which is a nonprofit civil liberties and human rights organization whose international headquarters are located in Charlottesville, Virginia. Uh, John is deeply committed to protecting the constitutional freedoms of every American and the integral human rights of all people. Uh, and the Rutherford Institute has emerged as a prominent leader in the National Dialogue on Civil Liberties and Human Rights. Uh, so uh, we're honored to have John on the program to talk about this. Before we dive into uh, what he writes about in his books, uh, we're going to frame the conversation, as we always do, with some aphorisms. Um, because John's books talk about the progression of the administrative state, I thought it would be useful to maybe quote some of the American presidents who have presided over this. Firstly, Bill Clinton, who wrote, The road to tyranny, we must never forget, begins with the destruction of truth. Uh, Next, uh, his uh, successor, uh, uh, George uh, W. Bush, we need an independent media to hold people like me to account. Wow, is that ever true? Uh, Next, uh, the man who came after him, uh, President Barack Obama, said in December of 2009, the instruments of war do have a role to play in preserving the peace And yet this truth must coexist with another, that no matter how justified, war promises human tragedy. And of course, uh, Mr. Trump, President Trump, who wrote, our country is being run by incompetent people. (laughs) Would you agree with that, John? Uh, Well, I'd say incompetent to a certain degree, but also very corrupt. You know, there have been some... uh detailed studies in this country there was one that their conclusion and it's very good it's a good study but they said that washington dc is run by 585 billionaires basically yeah that most people do not realize it it's basically what's been called the deep state and mm-hmm. that term came from a memo that was leaked in the about i think it was 2015 by the fbi with well, somebody in the fbi said that basically the united states is run by run by the seventh floor group in other words, underneath you know, under, underneath Washington, D.C. And then there was another study that came out of SMU University in this country, a very good study, where psychopaths congregated in America. And the conclusion by the professors was Washington, D.C. <laughs> so if those studies are true, America is run by people consumed with money who are psychopathic. And you can see it. I mean, the presidents you cited, every one of them initiated things that were so 
completely obliterating our, our rights. What we've developed here is basically a censorship industrial complex. And that's why people today in America complain, what's happened to free speech? We can't say this word. We can't say that word. We get blasted. Uh, social credit scores may not, that may not be the term, but in America today, if you say the wrong words, you, you can get booted off of Twitter, uh, Facebook yeah. or anything just because you say the wrong word now. Right. And it's happening in public schools and colleges, by the way. People are afraid to say certain words. Uh, four or five years ago, I talked to some younger kids and I asked them, well, you know, basically how school was. And they said, well, you know, I was telling them about free speech. Said, There's 10 words we can't say. And I said, such as, she said, well, the G word was one word. And I said, oh, usually in America, in schools, you can't say God. I said, oh, God. And she said, no, no, no. I said, what's the word? And she said, I can't say it. I said, can you write it down? She wrote it down. It was guns. Oh, and I wow. said, can I ask you a question? What do you call those uh, weapons that people that the troops in Af Afghanistan carry, American troops? Are they Gs or are they guns? What do you call what the police carry? Are they Gs or are they guns? So it's become an idiocracy in a way uh, in our country. And I've never seen it go so fast. I've been, like I said, I've been uh, practicing constitutional law for 40 years in this country. And I was uh, early on a, a free speech advocate. I think free speech is the kindling fire to freedom. It keeps freedom alive. Right. And what we're seeing today, though, they're, they're putting freedom out. Because what free speech does, it ignites. It can ignite people. It can correct people who are wrong. And the reason that the... Big corporations who are working with the government, by the way, very intimately to control everything. And that's what we have today. That's why we see everything is being is under surveillance, is they want your control. There's a really good movie by a director named John Carpenter called They Live. And basically, I saw a quote from him and after he made the movie. He says, I, I discovered that all, all the government wants is your money and control. That's all right. they want. Yeah. And... Uh, as you, if you've seen my books, again, I go into early fascism, Hitler and people like that, yeah. which has come forward, in my opinion. That's Philip K. Dick, the great sci-fi writer's terms. He says, history, you don't go back to history. It comes forward to you when you right. change. And we're seeing that happen today. Um, Hitler said it really well. He said that one of the best things for a leader is a sleepwalking people. Zombies, in other words. Yeah. And today, when I go to like New York City or big cities, I see people crossing the street in a busy city, and they're all staring at their phone. I go into a restaurant and see two parents and three kids all staring at their phone. Folks, I'm telling you, those things are controlled from central agencies. Uh, and now with singularity and artificial intelligence coming, I mean, two Google executives recently resigned saying about artificial intelligence, we've created God. Right. They were freaking because they saw that this thing was going to be independent. It wasn't going to be something that you just pushed a button. It was going to start ruling. Elon Musk said it too. Yeah. He said, uh, and it, was, it was a good quote, but he said, if you have a human dictator, that dictator will die and there will be a possibility of freedom. If you have an artificial intelligence dictator, it will last forever and it will be evil. And that's where we're headed. If we don't wake up, get control of what's going on in the so-called media, uh, get these people out of power that are controlling things and move back to our local communities. That's how America started, by the way. It was local communities that controlled things. When you have everything coming out of D.C., I ask people, when a bill comes out or something, some kind of law, they don't like it, or they do like it, I say, did you vote for that? Yeah. And they say, no. I said, well, you had no say so? Well, my representative. Well, let me tell you about your representative. <laughs> He's paid by people with big money. He's run by it. The average congressman spends two to three days a week on the cell phones, whatever computers raising money, and we pay them to do that? They live like kings. They have limos, guards, and we're and the American public. And 
the American citizen today, many of us, why homelessness is a huge problem in America. People can't afford that stuff. I think that's called houselessness now. They've changed the word, John. (laughs) Yeah. You got $31 trillion debt, America. $31 trillion. If I ran my organization, the Rough Institute, like that, I'd get fired. Because and I should. What in the world? They're funding wars, they're funding all this stuff. But listen, none of us ever get to vote on it. Right. And it, it all that's gone. And the only hope that we have in this country, I mean, is just getting it back and getting our local governments to take control. And we have a tenth amendment which says the local governments can nullify acts of the federal government. And trying to get local governments to move is very, very difficult. Right. But we moved in here, and this is probably the most dangerous aspect I see in our country. We moved into martial law in this country. Yeah, I want to talk to you about this because when I read Battlefield America, first of all, I was shocked at um, how far back this goes and how early on you were tuned into this frequency uh, because this is going all the way back to the 80s. You document it all the way back, and this book was actually, actually published in 2015. But in Battlefield America, you talk about how police forces are being used to basically create a situation of martial law. And uh, we're seeing this very much so in, in, in Canada. But my question for you about this, John, is that um, if, if the police are being weaponized to create martial law, why is it the left uh, who, who keep wanting to defund the police? Why, they want to keep defunding the police? Yeah, well, they don't defund the police. That's the point. <laughs> <laughs> they can defund the police, but uh, they're not going to do that because every president, even the ones you cited, right, they back the police 100. percent In fact, Biden is now calling for 100,000 new armored police, 80,000 new F- IRS agents, our tax wow. government agents, yeah, to be armed with bullets and guns and ready to move. Incredible. Uh, uh, the point is, and here's something that most people don't realize. I'm a former infantry officer. I served in the Army, and I trained troops how to shoot. I could not use hollow point bullets. They said that I, It was just the thing. that the, even They were saying, we don't use hollow point bullets in America because they're inhuman. Because when they hit a spot like your arm or your head, they expand. John F. Kennedy was shot in the head with a hollow point bullet. Oh, Martin Luther okay. King, hollow point bullet. John Lennon, the Beatle, had four put in his chest. They make sure you're dead. Most of the governments had them. But uh, about six or seven years ago, the Department of Homeland Security in this country uh, actually had the ATK Corporation make hollow point bullets, especially for them, millions. And they every agency in our country basically now has hollow point bullets, uh, they have all have SWAT teams now. The Department of Education has hollow point bullets. I can give you a list here. I can read. I got it right here. Uh, IRS, the Food and Drug Administration, the Small Business, Business Administration, the Social Security Administration, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, the Education Department in America, the Energy Department, the Bureau of Engraving and Printing, and down the list, all have SWAT teams and hollow point bullets. What? in the world do they have what's wrong and what i've seen is there's a paranoia in the in the federal government they're afraid there could be an uprising they're ready for it in fact there's a 2030 video that the pentagon actually has put out a training video and i've written on it people should go to our website at rutherford.org rutherford.org and read some of this stuff it's all heavily footnoted we footnote everything but they did a video, a training video, basically saying about 2030, they think the country's going to break down. They're going to institute martial law. So they're getting ready for this. FBI works with local police chiefs, chiefs in this country and training them. And the FBI is very corrupt, by the way. Everybody knows that. If you've studied America, go back to the late 40s and 1950s, where it all started, when they were in, tracking down Frank Sinatra and all the big movie stars, Walt Disney, they were watching. You know, and, and it all came out of Nazi Germany, by the way. That's another thing that's in my book. I, I document that. Right. The FBI was just completely infatuated with Adolf Hitler yeah. and loved him, boy. It was like he was like a little god to them. And uh, after the war, most people don't like Project Paperclip. Most people don't realize this. It's actually a fact, folks. Uh, 
We don't know how many, but at least several thousand top Nazis came into the United States at the end of World War II and infiltrated into our universities and, edu and, and, and into uh, government agencies and stuff in this country. In fact, there was one former CIA agent, I read a, read a comment by her years ago, and she said, for a while in certain parts of the government she was working with in D.C., everybody had, so they had German accents. And she said it was, a, it was just a mind-blowing thing to, to see. So this has been going on for a long time, folks. And the sleepwalking masses that Hitler liked, that's what we've become in America. And it may be the same in Canada. It is. It is, unfortunately. John, one other thing I'd like to get your take on is um, in Canada, we're hearing a lot about what's going on at the southern border in the U.S., and places like Texas, where basically uh, people are pouring in, not just from Central America, but from all over the world. And in Canada, we have a similar situation where basically a mass immigration. Our government, we're a country of only 38 million people, roughly the population of California, but they want to bring in a million and a half migrants uh, just in the next year or so. How does, that, how does this, this mass migration and and you know not not policing uh, our our national borders anymore. How does that fit within this whole plan, uh, this whole scheme for 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 world domination and destruction of freedom? Well, what the, the people in power? We know that they all set the new world order and all that stuff. Bush said it when he let it out of his mouth. Uh, people were like, "What's that mean, new world order?" They want a a, a global state. Basically, it'll be ruled by. Again, billionaires uh, either run out of whatever, the United Nations or whatever, wherever they'll be ru running it. And um, that's exactly what they want. And um, having a independent countries is not a good idea because independent countries can, can do all the things I'm saying. Get out of here. We don't want you here. Right. You're talking to the federal government or anybody. And they don't want that. They don't want independence. They want everybody dependent on one basic, basic stream. And like I say, with AI now taking over across the globe, by the way, and people don't realize it, but in this country, the National Security Agency, the NSA, has its Five Eyes program. It's, it's got bases all around the world. They've set up a worldwide dome, basically. And they work with the Chinese government. Uh, Snowden, ever Snowden a couple of months ago, said he was basically shocked at how powerful and influential China has become. Yeah. If you don't realize it, but there's actually a Chinese police station now in New York City. We have a half dozen of them in Canada that we know yeah. about. Yeah. Yeah, they're strong across America too, in my opinion. And then you have the Confucius Institutes that are basically Chinese uh, educational units that are at American colleges and Biden's now trying to provide funding for them. And I'm going, why would we want to mimic a country that locked people in the concentration camps for saying the wrong word? Because that's where they want everything to be. Right. They want a sleepwalking people. They want yeah. zombies. Right. And they're doing a, a very good job of it, by the way, with the cell phones. Mm -hmm. And um, I think, and I've said it, we have less than a decade, and I'm not sure we can get out of this hole now. And again, there were the great writers like George Orwell who saw it coming. In America today, we're under total surveillance. Everything you say in your home now can be picked up by your phone. The FBI said this, we can turn your phone on, cell phone, at a, at a distance from a, quite a ways off and listen to everything you're doing in your home. Uh, we can turn your laptop on and watch you if it's mm. if the top's up. So AI is already starting to move in that direction. And again, um, I would say read the great thinkers of the day. If you've never seen the movie Blade Runner, that's a yes. really good. Movie. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, Harrison Ford. It, yeah, yeah, it's Philip K. Dix, but but he was predicting as he saw it uh, a future of robotics, and that's right. where we're going. Elon Musk says it's. I, another quote by Musk, he says, I've been yelling it to people, but they won't see it or believe it until they see the robots coming at them down the street. In America, you have uh, the police in many cities now using robotic dogs. Right. They send the dog to the door. <clears throat> A robot, yeah. to peck, 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 and yeah. you've got to come up to the door. 
And what in the world? And they some of those dogs are actually have uh, machine guns on. That's just the beginning, folks. You're getting a warning. Right. And if you don't get the warning, you're going to get blown away in the future. Yeah. And I tell people, if you care for your children, your grandchildren, your children are growing up today, start getting them oriented into a real world where they'll have a chance to think because pretty soon they're not going to be able to think. So this is uh, this is a, an interesting point, uh, John, because as you know, uh, in the United States and also in Canada, right now we have very leftist leaders in, in power, let's face it. And uh, Mr. Biden and his government uh, are, are very unpopular, uh, as is Mr. Trudeau. But it seems to me that uh, the people on the other side of the question, let's call them conservatives or the right, um, they talk a lot about a regime change and how that's going to change everything. You know, if Mr. Trump or Mr. DeSantis is going to come in or, or in Canada, Mr. Polivier. Um, to me, based upon what you've written and what I'm looking at and listening to you, that's wrong-headed. In, in other words, we shouldn't be staring at the tops of the trees. We've got to be looking at the roots, as you're saying. If we're going to make these changes, we, we, we can't put our faith, as C.S. Lewis uh, once famously wrote, we, we, we should never put too much faith in one man, one person, because that's, that's, that's going to lead us astray. So the, the answer to this is not a regime change, is it? No, because the as I said, the studies show that uh, D.C., Washington, D.C., the federal government is run by 585 billionaires. And if you see somebody as president, that means they approved of that person. And that right. means that person bowed the knee before them. And it's all about money, by the way. It's like I say, Washington, D.C. is about money. And um, it's when you... You look at some of the congressmen up there, or listen, the, some of them have actually been questioned <laughs> about our Constitution. They can't tell you anything about it. And I say, I, I'm saying, well, why don't we do this? Why don't we make them take a test on the Constitution before they take office? And uh, why can't I just get on the phone and call them or once in a while or one of their assistants and talk to them? They used to come to communities and, and hold meetings occasionally. Right. They stopped doing that because people would come and go, we disagree. You know, they don't want to hear free speech. Right. Um, and it's like I say, we, we have less than 10 years. And I'm really concerned because, like I say, of the ki kids coming up today, they are so addicted to their cell phones that thinking independently is going to be very difficult. Mm -hmm. they're, they're just watching what they want to watch and they're not being challenged to think. And, um, the greatest thinkers I've ever known, you mentioned Mark Twain, C.S. Lewis, people like that, they were thinkers, and they were always challenging people, and they were always being challenged. And um, that's what we're teaching the kids. They just, you know, again, set and watch, set and watch, set and watch. And entertainment, by the way, I just say it's slavery. Yeah. It worked. Entertainment right. is slavery. You know, it, they love it. I mean, well, how did the Romans, see, I'm telling people, if you just say a little history, Bread and what circuses. Did the Romans call it bread yeah. and circuses. That's right. Yeah. That's how they control the people. <laughs> yeah. What are we today? Breads and circuses. It's all this media, the sports, and all the things they're yeah. flooding at us all the time. Things, but what I mean, okay, you might like sports, but here's the point. What how does that help your thinking? Hmm. How does that help your freedom thoughts? Yeah. You know. If that's all you're into, folks, you're a slave to the screen devices. You're merging with it, basically. Right. And that's what they want. They want us to merge with those devices. And the way it's coming, like I say, with uh, artificial intelligence, and uh, if, like I say, your listeners, look up the Singularity program. Uh, Google has said that by 2030, artificial intelligence is going to fuse with the human mind. Right. And we're not going to be able to think if we allow that. Yeah. And you got Elon Musk has his chips, his neural links and stuff. They're ready to link us into computers. Oh. It's, it's, a wonder, it's, it's a wonder they haven't tried that on uh, Mr. Biden. He seems to need the, need the help. <laughs> <laughs> he may need it, yeah. Yeah. So, John, I wanted to turn and talk about um, uh, a couple of your books. Obviously, we, you've talked about Battlefield America. 
another wonderful book called A Government of Wolves, The Emerging American Police State. You've talked somewhat about that, but there was one other book I read that I really, really enjoyed uh, uh, that you wrote called Grasping for the Wind. Uh, And uh, this book is just wonderful. And uh, the description is um, one of the nation's most intriguing and controversial Christian thinkers uh, writes a history of 20th century culture, where we've been, where we're going, and holds it up to the standard of God's eternal truth. Would you mind talking about that book a little bit? Because it's a bit of a departure from from what you from your other books. But by the same token, I, I think you'll agree what you're talking about in grasping for the wind is sort of the foundation, what underpins uh, all of our ideas about freedom and about truth and reality, right? Is that is that a fair assessment? Yeah, you get an idea. Uh, and the key here is that uh, the people who wrote our Constitution believed in that, Judeo-Christian right. values. You read uh, the Declaration of Independence, Thomas Jefferson, he said it very clearly, you know, we have inalienable rights, they come from God. Right. And uh, you can't take them away. Governments cannot take them away. And as I was looking to modern culture as it was moving through and why I wrote that book, grasping for the wind was because I was seeing how we were, how that was being thrown out, that everything was being pushed away on those ideas. And as we've done that, as we've done that, uh, go back to history, folks. I'm going to go back to Adolf Hitler, the old Soviet Union and places like that. They threw all that out the window, the Chinese communists. They don't want that. They don't want people saying, I have inalienable rights. Get out of my home right now, Mr. Agent. Mm -hmm. They don't want people thinking like that. And if you believe that, that you have these inalienable rights, and I do believe it, and I I know we have them, uh, we need to teach our kids that, and be taught in the schools, and get those back. And that's why I wrote that book. Yeah. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed that book. I actually all, all three of the books that 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 uh, I read of yours, uh, I quite enjoyed. And I really enjoyed this time with you today, John. I know you're very busy. Thank you for taking your time and to uh, expand yourself into your hopefully Canadian audience. Uh, and uh, thank you so much for being our special guest today on, on Grey Matter. This has been a really illuminating conversation. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Very much. 